Before I begin, um, uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending this webinar. Um, before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge first my collaborator, Ms. Laura Crispahe, um, and then express gratitude to the IDRC for funding this research. Um, and then uh, thank you also to, uh, should go to Ms. Lucita Melendez of the PIDS for overall assistance and to Ms. Mary, Mary Rose Castro of the DICT for helping us roll out the online survey. Without her help, for sure, uh, this paper would not have been possible. So um, uh, the PIDS, as I uh, already mentioned, had several webinars on digitization and digital platforms this year. So some of you may be familiar with some of the slides, but uh, still I will briefly show it just to motivate the discussion. So in the next slide, um, I think that the best way to start the discussion is to provide some stylized facts on uh, gender in the Philippines. So uh, the Philippines has several mi milestones in terms of women empowerment and gender equality. And in fact, it has already achieved gender uh, parity in the education front, although critical gender gaps remain. And uh, one of these uh, gaps would be the low women's labor force participation, which is um, currently the lowest in the uh, Southeast Asia. So based on the World Bank's uh, world development indicators, um, in 1994, it's around 47 percent, and in 2020, it's around 46 percent. So not much uh, um, development there, and it reached around 50 percent. Uh, it's the highest in 2014. In in part, this is uh, validated uh, by the 2019 LFS uh, October round, uh, as mentioned already by Mamsel. Uh, 51 percent of women, at least uh, 25 years old, are working versus the 81 percent. Um, uh, 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 men's 81 percent, and this can be attributed to housework. So 74 percent of women uh, have expressed household and uh, family duties as main reasons for not looking for work, versus only 15 percent uh, saying that that's the reason. Um, in, uh, and at the same time, there's an evidence on pay gap, uh, although uh, it's not conclusive in terms of favoring a specific gender. So there are studies that says that um, uh, there's a gender pay, pay gap in favor of men, and there are studies that would say that there is a gender pay gap in favor of women. So this study is not really that conclusive. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. Ah, sorry, uh, back, back, third slide. All right, okay, so, um, okay, one more. Okay, so, one more, okay. Um, so uh, here, uh, I just we just want to say that the ICT developments have paved the way for uh, the development of digital platforms. And um, these digital platforms, they bring together markets, markets for tangible goods, non-tangible goods, and labor. So the paper that uh, we'll be um, discussing here today would be on labor platforms. That, that will be our uh, focus. The, on uh, labor platforms, there are at least two types of work, on-demand work and crowd work. So the on-demand work, uh, uh, these are work that requires close interaction between workers and demanders, and platforms need to access uh, domestic physical infrastructures to operate. So uh, they are subject to local rules and regulation. Whereas crowd work uh, entirely commissioned, uh, commissioned by firms and is entirely transacted and delivered online. So under uh, crowd work, there are two types of tasks, macro tasks, which requires specialized skills, and the contract uh, contract price is negotiable. While um, micro tasks, uh, these are tasks that are routinary in nature, and the contract price is not negotiable. So between the two, on demand work and crowd work, it's the crowd work that that's a little bit challenging in terms of enforcing the national uh, labor laws that are designed to ensure decent work because transactions are cross border. Nevertheless, there are benefits from digital labor platforms. One, it gives access to economic opportunities uh, to people who may otherwise not have opportunities uh, in the labor market. It boasts of uh, flexible working hours, of supervision, and um, reduction of financial and health costs associated with travel and road congestions. 
it can also help uh, to achieve SDG targets that are related to women empowerment and gender equality. Um, and then it can also address the age old conflict of market and non market work. Um, and at the same time, if uh, correctly used, it can help in developing skills that are relevant to uh, offline work. Next slide, please. So despite the uh, uh, despite the uh, benefits that we've already mentioned, there are some challenges for, uh, on platforms because there are, are asymmetries that result in structural inequalities and issues on decent work. So what are these asymmetries? Uh, value asymmetry because most of the value occur, uh, the value occurs most to platforms and to firms and the least to the workers. Risk asymmetry because uh, all the risks are borne by workers, um, protect, uh, social protection coverage, training investments, production cost, uh, information asymmetry because platforms manage and control uh, all the information that will be available to the market. Um, and of course, if there's information asymmetry, there's also power asymmetry. Now there is also uh, there are also issues uh, like, for example, there's a lack of collective representation uh, of workers on the platform, and this is uh, it, this really makes sense because workers are are coming from different parts of the world, and it's really difficult to put them together in one room in order to to form a group to have the social dialogue and collective bargaining. Um, so there are also no, no mechanisms on platforms to resolve disputes and redress grievances. And again, um, the, the absence of plat, uh, platform led skills and career development and uh, uh, limited or absent social protection. Um, next slide, please. So the issues that I have mentioned earlier are actually uh, issues that are not unique to the platform world. Uh, and these issues are also not new. Because, for example, the precariousness arising from the lack of social protection, uh, this was a norm that uh, was observed in the early industrial revolution uh, when piecemeal work and task-based payments was uh, was common. So it, it, it's not the, the issues are not new, the issues are not unique. What is really new and unique is the way how these old practices are facilitated facilitated and how work is organized. So um, in the uh, on the platforms, uh, big jobs or big tasks are broken down into simple tasks. And these uh, platforms, they sell to clients who benefit from, from this because of, of the labor ar arbitrage. And then uh, these platforms, they use algorithmic data management to save on the cost of management of human resources and tasks, quality control, uh, rejection of outputs, and even the review and rating systems. Uh, rejection of outputs, very important or uh, very important because it, it uh, helps uh, workers to to find future uh, secure uh, work uh, future work rather on the platform similar story for review and rating systems because it, it helps uh, workers to build rep uh, their reputation on the platform and be able to to uh, secure uh, future work as well on the platform uh, next slide please so here we just want uh, we, we just wanted to share uh, some of the findings from our uh, review of the related literature in terms of uh, uh, there's still no consensus on which gender is present more on the platform. It depends on the economy, uh, platform, age or tasks. Um, uh, there are also high quit the women also uh, are found to have high quit rates. Uh, and then there's a gender pay gap, and this gender pay gap is uh, really uh, conclusive in the sense that uh, women freelancers or women online workers they receive lower um, uh, they they, they re receive lower remuneration compared to men. At the same time, uh, geographical location uh, also there's a pay gap that exists in the sense that crowd workers from North America, Europe, and Central Asia they they earn more than those uh, from Africa and the Asia and the Pacific. Um, next slide, please. So uh, the uh, issue uh, on platform work platform work is still at its nascent stage. It's still evolving as uh, as Jillian or uh, mentioned earlier, it's still emerging and evolving and really providing answers to questions. For example, how do we ensure that these new business models will not exacerbate inequalities? 
uh, what can be done to realize the full potential of platform work uh, in achieving women empowerment and gender equality? So these are the questions that we would like to have uh, answers to. Unfortunately, because platform work is still emerging, still evolving, it's, there are challenges in order, uh, to, to really address these questions. Because under this uh, setting, um, it's really heterogeneous in scope and complexity, and there's still no consensus in terms of definition and methodologies for data collection. So uh, what we did was, uh, in our mind, a good starting point when we have this, when you have these issues in our mind, a good starting point is to first leverage on purposive survey just to characterize workers and the work that they do. Um, and then the, the issue here is that to be just for us to be able to enhance the visibility of issues uh, and initiate the conversation on the necessary steps to ensure that policies and programs adjust to this, this new form of work arrangement. And so what we did was um, we conducted an online survey of market and non-market work uh, last year from May to December. This is in collaboration with the ICT Literacy and Competency Development Bureau of the DICT. So the DICT uh, it conducts the Digital Jobs PH program, which uh, aim to assist economically disadvantaged areas and rural communities through the creation and promotion of ICT-enabled jobs. So the online survey uh, is a rider activity to this uh, uh, digital jobs training in 2020. Now, um, uh, uh, at this point, what we want to say is um, this is a purposive uh, survey. It's non-random sampling. And therefore, all the results that we're going to share with you today are not generalizable to the whole population uh, it, it, because it's very difficult uh, to, to find the sampling frame for this type of workers. This is not like we're looking for households or we're not looking for firms, but we are looking for specific type, very specific type of workers that uh, may or may not want themselves uh, to be uh, seen or be, become visible. So the, in, uh, the intent of the online survey is only to describe uh, some results based on our conditional and, and unconditional analysis um, and then all our interpretations, um, all these caveats should hold. Now, the good news is that despite the non-representativeness of the online survey samples, most of the findings uh, that we have are consistent with the broad findings of studies abroad that use nationally representative uh, survey. Um, next slide, please. So here uh, we just want to show that there are around 855 completed responses uh, and uh, the respondents are, are combinations of people who have platform work only, uh, people who have non-platform work only, respondents who have both platform and non-platform work, and uh, respondents who have no uh, work, uh, market work whatsoever. So the reasons for, uh, there are main reasons for attending the, the, the ICT training would be uh, they have future plans in engagement uh, in using online online tools for businesses and in engagement in platform work. We also ask people why they are not involved in any platform work, and there are three major reasons that they have cited. Um, lack of opportunities, that's one, uh, uh, two is inadequate skills, and three, connectivity issues, which appear to be higher in rural communities. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so men and women, uh, they have, uh, uh, they have been affected by the uh, by the COVID-19. Uh, however, uh, a higher percentage of so, but but there are the, the differences uh, in the sense that a higher percentage of women have indicated they suffered financial oppor or of opportunity losses. Uh, op opportunity or financial losses. These uh, means that they uh, they lost contract, they lost trainings. Um, the reduction in terms of wa uh, wage, reduction in terms of work hours. Uh, a higher percentage of women also have indicated hampered mobility and issues on access to services, whereas a higher percentage of men have experienced unemployment and have reported depletion of savings due to the lack of income. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of uh, reduction of online work, in terms of on online work, rather, a similar percentage of men and women have indicated a reduction of online work. Around 23% of the respondents, both men and women, uh, they indicated termination of contract, loss of clients, reduction of work hours in platform work. Um, and this uh, uh, reduction in online work is connected with, for example, it's aggravated by issues on connectivity and limited mobility because of the lockdown. 
lockdown. Um, the, because the lockdown have um, forced people to stay in one place that can have connectivity issues or without technicians to troubleshoot connection problems. Now, uh, this uh, reduction uh, in online work is an expected outcome of global slowdown. Um, but there are studies in 2020 uh, that, sh that uh, show there are certain types of online work that are resilient. Um, macro tasks such as software development technology were, um, they, they were affected, but they were resilient in the sense that they were able to bounce back. But there are certain types of uh, online work that uh, have been ha adversely affected it significantly, uh, 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 significantly have significantly reduced. Uh, these include uh, creative uh, and multimedia and sales and marketing support. So the bad news is that based on the online labor index uh, collected by the Oxford University, more, uh, a bulk of uh, bulk of the Filipino workers, online Filipino workers, are in these areas uh, creating multimedia and sales and marketing. In part, this is validated by our online survey, where we can, where a lot of our respondents are doing clerical and data data entry and creative and multimedia and internet and sales and marketing support. Um, <clears throat> next slide, please. <clears throat> so there are the motivations in online uh, work participation differ between men and women as well. So both men and women, they indicated savings from uh, travel costs and better pay uh, as, um, as um, their motivations. But um, women, uh, a higher proportion of them have done platform work due to housework and due to the pursuit of other interests. Whereas for men, it's the pursuit of other interests that is the main consideration and only a very small uh, proportion percentage of the respondents have indicated um, uh, housework to be their main motivation. Next slide, please. So the challenges faced by men and women on platforms are not the same as well. So for example, for women, uh, of, of, of both men and women rather, uh, they, they indicated connectivity as, as uh, the, their main majority, a majority of them have indicated uh, connectivity uh, as the main challenge. But for women, um, uh, more, more women or more respondents have indicated the inadequacy of social protection. Uh, and then um, higher proportion of women also have indicated uh, the issues of inadequacy of skills. Whereas for men, it's more of time management uh, arising from the presence of too many platform works uh, and having a full-time job. Um, next slide, please. So uh, the good thing about uh, 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 platform work is that it can be done alongside non-platform work or uh, offline work. Uh, and then the, these non-platform work can be a source of social protection uh, for, for workers, for platform workers. So that's the good news. Um, but it's not uh, so much a good news for women because we know that in the Philippines, social protection is largely tied to formal employment. Uh, and we know also uh, based on um on our discussion, uh, uh, our earlier discussion, that women's labor force participation is very low. It is around uh, forty six percent. Uh, and those who work around 50% of them are own account workers. So this means that um, it displays that fewer women uh, have insurance and pension coverage. Uh, have fewer fewer women rather have insurance and pension coverage, and fewer women have access to consumption smoothing mechanisms like memberships to cooperative. And in part, this is uh, validated by um, the results of the online survey where relative to their male counterparts, a smaller percentage of female respondents without non-platform work contribute to social security uh, fund. Um, and then there are also commonly cited reasons for non-subscription. So because people are wondering why they are not uh, subscribing uh, to social security funds. And, and here we found that um, it's a combination of many factors, but the, um, um, but the um, ma ma major um, the major uh, factor would be budget constraints. So, for example, they have financial struggles and they don't have stable jobs. Uh, they don't have stable income. And 
it feeds into the attitude as well, this budget constraint. So therefore, they don't prioritize, they're not interested. Um, and then the lack of information certainly uh, do not help uh, 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 workers to appreciate uh, uh, social protection schemes. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> So here uh, we just uh, look into the dynamics of uh, uh, platform work and we found that majority of the respondents have current platform engagements that are similar to their past platform work. So these are the, the if you can see the, um, the highlighted diagonal, uh, most of the figures, most of the, of, of the numbers are non-zeros are, uh, are, are focused along, on the, along the diagonal. And then this, this shows that whatever it is that you did in the past, more likely are the same job that you will be uh, doing now. We also did a conditional um, analysis and we found that past experience on the platform is an important uh, determinant in the current platform in, uh, involvement. So the takeaway here is that um, one, skills development and training are really important because these determine whether uh, workers will be able to secure a job, that's one. And two, if ever they uh, secure a job, what kind of job they will end up doing. And, and second uh, takeaway here is that just like the story of the social protection coverage, um, skills development can be availed from workers' other market work. So mean, uh, it means, and this makes sense, because if you're working in a formal workplace, then that means that you practice, you interact, you have interaction, you have collaboration, and you practice. Um, and, and so you develop skills uh, along the way. But again, this is good news, but not so much for women because of we've already, as we have already pointed out, um, uh, um, only 50% of them are on the are, are on the labor force and the, those who end up working are our own account. So, so th there are, are issues uh, uh, in the sense that uh, female respondents, they are more likely to participate in platform work. And, and if that is the case, then this puts forth the issue on how they can secure the job or what type of, or what type of jobs they can secure on the platform and whether they can sustain work on the platform. Next slide, please. So here we just uh, showed some uh, we just uh, showed some uh, analysis on platform work, and we found that by based on the te test of means, there are, uh, women are spending more time than men uh, on the platform, and this uh, has something to do with the flexibility. Although the benefits of flexibility in platform it appears uh, limited because we also looked at uh, the conditional on the. Uh, care economy or care work, we found that uh, beyond one to three hours of care work, the hours spent in platform work decline and approach zero. So it's really um, it's really uh, minimal. The, there's uh, the work done on platform is only done side by side minimal care work. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, so here uh, we just uh, we just wanted to show that there is uh, we look also at the compensation per hour and we found that there is no gender difference. That's good news. Uh, once personal and platform attributes are controlled for, this is actually um, uh, consistent with uh, the result of uh, some of the ILO study. Um, the compensation per hour we also found uh, uh, received by the respondents. We also found that it's really higher relative to the compensation prevailing in the country. Uh, it's higher than the Philippine minimum wage in 2020. It's higher than the basic pay of a professional, which we uh, computed in another paper. Although here, um, uh, the bad, the not so bad, not so good news is that we the compensation per hour received by the respondents uh, is higher, uh, uh, rather on par with the rate of international platforms that are known for outsourcing routine tasks. So you can see there that the kind of value that's being fetched by our uh, online workers. Next, uh, next slide, please. So here, this is the last slide. Ways forward, uh, we just want. I just wanted to point that you know, you just emphasize that the issues and challenges faced by women uh, cut across many di uh, dimensions. Um, so, for example, if we talk about labor concerns. Uh, social protection and skills development, it naturally touches on gendered issues. 
Thus, the ways forward that I will be uh, sharing with you today must be given in broader context. So both men and women will benefit from the development of training systems and social protection systems, although women will benefit more. And so I'd like to say four things. Uh, one is on the skills development. It has critical role, one, in securing a job on the platform, in getting one that has a higher value added, and on the sustainability of platform work as well. And therefore, there is a need for a national initiative that's related to skills and training system. So uh, we were, I'm, and here I'm echoing uh, the importance of having this national upskilling program. Uh, one is we need to have to adopt a whole of society approach, meaning collaboration of all stakeholders to ensure that the training um, and skill systems will adapt to the evolving needs of global and local labor markets. Two is leverage digital platforms, develop skills and training systems to efficiently bring together private and public providers to serve the demand for skills and training. And three, build on the existing programs and initiatives. We have the Digital Jobs Page Program. We have the Philippine Talent Map Initiative. There are building they, these programs. They have the building blocks that can be used in designing a skill system that is comprehensive and integrated with all the actors. And, and fourth, learn from the skills development, uh, skills program of other countries, just like the skills future in Singapore. So that's the first one. The social protection, the, we just, I just want to emphasize that there are many attributes of social protection systems, but the one that is more relevant to crowd work would be flexibility and portability. And then for care work, um, the issue on care work, uh, it goes beyond crowd work, actually, because care work, it affects women regardless of their work arrangement. One, it is the main reason why women, um, especially married uh, women, they are not participating in the labor market. And as we have already seen, it also puts a limit on how much uh, uh, workers can put into their platform work. So it's really important to support women who are working already. And there are already uh, initiatives and programs that can be Further it strengthens, so for example, good and reliable child care services uh, that coincide with the office schedule. Uh, the institutionalization of uh, four day work we can be uh, explored and the implementation of work from home uh, schemes for workers whose tasks can be done off site. Now for we support for women, men and women who do not work due to unpaid work, it needs more nuanced approaches. So for example, the government have uh, put up e-commerce websites uh, that's created to, the, to support small and medium enterprises. So the question is, how can these um, e-commerce websites be fully harnessed by women? And we have to understand why these women choose a care economy over market work. Are they looking for economic opportunities? What are their skills? What kind of enterprise are they capable of putting? And what do they need to set up uh, and sustain such enterprise? So consultation is key as well. And lastly, data collection. So there has to be a data collection so that um, the we, so that we don't just end up being doing this descriptives. It should be spearheaded by the PSA in collaboration with various government agencies, such as the DOLA, the DTI, the ICT, and the Philippine Commission on Women. I think I overshoot already, and that should be the end of my <laughs> presentation.